Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to third place action here at the Lutheran, Illinois Lutheran Basketball State Championships. We've got an exciting matchup for you today. The away team on the scoreboard is the Warriors of Trinity Bloomington taking on the Panthers of Zion Marengo. The two teams come in, the four and the two seed respectively. Let's talk about how the Trinity Warriors made their way to this third place game. Coached by Kurt Bussey, uh, season record 19 and seven. They beat Chicago or Holy Family Chicago 47-31 in the opening round, then beat Morton Bethel, who we saw take the fifth place in the game earlier this morning, 34-27, and then lost last night to Christ Peoria 46-33 it was a pretty good game up to halftime. They had, I believe they were only down five at that point, but just couldn't hold down the Comets of Christ Peoria. And the home team on the scoreboard, the Zion Panthers from Marengo, season record 24-3, and coached by Dave Washer. In the first round, uh, beat Holy Family 47-31 beat East Dundee Emmanuel 43-40 in round two, and last night lost to Cross Yorkville 50-40, in which was a very back and forth game. Uh, two pretty good players, one of which we'll talk about here in just a moment from Marengo. Lexa, welcome to game two of the day. How Thank are you feeling? You. I'm feeling good. I got a little warmed up in the first one, and we just got finished uh, watching the girls fourth and fifth place game, or third and fourth place game, up, my apologies. And that was a nail biter up until about two minutes left of the game. So I'm, I'm prompt, my blood is going, I'm ready for this game. All right, Lexa, well, it looks like we're just about to get underway and we'll come back with your keys to the game and a couple players to keep an eye on uh, right after we hear from the scores table and the starting lineups. Good afternoon. I would like to welcome everybody here to our championship Sunday in this our 34th annual Lutheran Sports Association State Grade School Basketball Tournament. We want to congratulate both teams for the opportunity they have right now to play for our third place game in our state of Illinois. We'll be introducing the uh, players for both squads and then opening with our pregame prayer. Let's introduce our players. But, but before we do that, I guess I got one more thing to add here. Before we begin, we ask that all participants and spectators conduct themselves in a God-pleasing manner before, during, and after this basketball game. This LSA Sportsmanship Award will be presented this weekend to the schools whose behavior of its players, coaches, and fans best demonstrate Christian sportsmanship. Now let's introduce our players. Let's introduce the visiting team for, from Marengo, the Zion Panthers. Their head coach is Dave Washer. His assistants are Scott Shepard and Hunter Simonini. Now the players, number five, Isaiah Taylor. Number 20, Brian Scholl. Number 21, Nate Seeslack. Number 30, Jericho Tynus. Number 31, Bryden Steele. Number 50, Michael Ashbaugh. Now the starters, number four, Evan Shepard. Number 11, Patrick Signori. Number 23, Preston Bailey. Number 24, Liam Keller. And number 25, Matthew Volkany. Those are the Panthers from Ringo Zion. The home team on the scoreboard are the Warriors from Bloomington Trinity. The Warriors are coached by Kurt Bussey. Kurt's assistants are Dan Bell, Randy Clark. Now the players, number 15, Jack Clark. Number 20, Jeffrey Morgan. 
Number 23, Nick Marshall. Number 32, Jackson Baber. Number 33, Owen Sen. Number 41, Zach Hoffman. Number 50, Gabe Hillshine. Now the starters, number 21, Diedrich Dirtle. Number 30, Jackson Osborne. Number 35, Josh Hoffman. Number 40, Sam Berta. And number 42, Jake Marvel. Those are the Warriors from Bloomington Trinity. And as we begin every game, we ask you please bow our head for a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this weekend of competition, fellowship, and sportsmanship you've given us. We thank you for all the Lutheran schools throughout the state of Illinois and the Christian ministry they provide our youth. We thank you for the many volunteers that have given, make this weekend possible, plus those same people who serve in their own schools in those same capacities. We thank you for the seasons you provide these teams to represent their schools and towns. Please, with all the players, coaches, officials, and fans, may our words and actions honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good luck, fellas. All right, so you've had the starting lineups. It's just about time to play some basketball, but first I'm going to turn to my co-host here, Alex Girl, she has some thoughts before we get started. Just looking at the size of each team, it kind of seems like a David and Goliath, but when you come down to stats and everything, you see that Marengo, their top scorer is Matthew Vulcany, and you got to watch out for him. You got to make sure that if you are going to stop him, if I was Trinity Warriors, that's the one person that I want to, I want to wolf that guy. I want to make sure that he's shut down. But other, go, turning towards the Trinity Warriors, you're looking at 35, Josh Hoffman, who's, who looks like he crashes the boards, who picks up a lot of the stuff, and he's got a really good, good uh, shooting range. And here's the tip. It is won by the Panthers. And Volkening will get the offense started. The Marengo launches a three. That one's good. Nice Down start the to well the for Patrick Signori as he gets the scoring underway here in this third and fourth place game. And here come the Trinity Warriors in their white uniforms, blue trim, blue numbers, with black outlining. Ball being swung around, now back up top to Sam Verda. Here's a nice swing pass and a three ball from Jack Jackson Osborne, in and out, no good. And the ball's gonna stay down here, it was last touched by Marengo. The Zions 2-3 defense, it's just, it's huge. Here's the inbound pass taken by Josh Hoffman, back to the corner to Verda. Now back out to Hoffman, nearly picked off. Here's a drive and a kick and a three ball from Diedrich Dirtle. That one's no good, another offensive board for the Warriors. Here's a jump shot from Verda down and good. So Sam Verda connects from 15 and cuts the early Warrior, or the Panther lead to one. So it's here's Signori. Now the ball in to Volkening. Volkening, hop step in the lane, right hand up short. Offensive board corralled by Keller. Keller had it blocked, gets his own board back up again and good. Liam Keller with a couple of offensive boards and a score in the lane. So here come the Warriors. Down three early to start. Verda, who knocked down that 15-footer the last possession, swung back around. Now here's a runner in the lane, partially blocked. That one from Jackson Osborne. The Panthers take possession, and here's an early three in the possession, long. Rebound nicely pulled down by Keller, and we're gonna have a jump ball. Excuse me, that rebound was Preston Bailey with the, on the offensive board, had it knocked away. And it'll be Warrior basketball. I'm seeing great defense from both sides of the team. Very aggressive, really wanted to get underneath that basket and get that defensive or offensive rebound. Warriors doing a nice job of swinging it around. And here's Verda, he'll take a three. That one's short and tap back in on the offensive end. Up and good for Verda. Something you don't really want. You don't really want to save it on the opposing team's end, do you? No, no, you don't, because that just gives them an, another opportunity. You saved them from having to restart. You just slipped into the ball. White. 
And that foul was on number 35, Josh Hoffman. The game's first. Here's Volkening in front of the Warrior bench. Now swung back up top to Signori. He finds Evan Shepard, who misses short with the three. And the Warriors look to push. Here comes Hoffman. Now back out, driving the lane. Kick to the corner, pump fake from number 21, Diedrich Dirtle. In the lane again is Josh Hoffman. Long, no good. Off, grabs his board. Here's Dirtle again with a 15-footer. That one's long. Off, another offensive board for Jake Marvel. And he kicks it out, looking to reset the offense. Here's a drive in the lane from Osborne. And a nice head fake in the corner from Jake Marvel yet again. Kills his dribble. Now back up top to Diedrich Dirtle. Dirtle finds Hoffman. Hoffman back to Dirtle. Dirtle in the post to Marvel. Nice ball movement from the Warriors. Here's a drive in the lane. Up oh. and... Good for Josh Hoffman. He found that pocket and he just took it. That was a smart move right there. Nice ball work there, opened up a lane as Hoffman had the nice easy layup. Preston Bailey finds Evan Shepard down to the post to Volkening. The drive baseline and blocked. That was Keller who tried to go up high and had it blocked. This is just a very aggressive game. You know, you just see all the guys just really getting in there. The passes are crisp, they're hard, they're clean. This is gonna be a very, very close game. Here's Hoffman looking to penetrate. Kick back out to Osborne. Osborne, double dribble. And it'll be Panther basketball. Try to squeak in there a little bit. You try to slide past that. Well, isn't that the whole point when you know, your offense is playing against a 2-3 zone. Don't you try to exploit those top two to kind of draw those two defenders in? You really want them to collapse, which means that it opens up your, uh, obviously, the three-point line, but then it also makes the bottom defense really spread out, which leaves pockets. Volkening with the turnaround jump shot. With his hit on the arm on the way up, and he'll go to the line for two. That last foul was on Sam Verda. His first team second. Volkening's first free throw is up and no good. Volkening came into the day. Eight of 16, 50% from the free throw line. And he sinks the second to tie the game at six. Driving the lane for Hoffman. He'll leave it off for Marvel. Marvel just a little too strong. And here's a nice tip and a steal. Up and no good. As Jackson Osborne tried to score with the left hand on the right side, but was hacked on his way up. Now that's what you want to do as a guard. If you're going to be inside the lane, you want to draw those tall men out and you really want to pressure them to follow you. That's the way to get them out of the game and then you can set up your offense a little easier. Jackson Osborne. After that made free throw is now seven of eight for the tournament. So pretty good from the line. Absolutely, absolutely. That's hard to do when you're in a high position. Second free throw is good. As I was saying, a high position for the game. It's a, an intense game. It's an important, important game. That's tough to do, so congrats. Eight, six, Warriors ahead. Here's Bailey looking into the post for Volkening. Another turnaround jump shot, short. Rebound tapped around and pulled down by Bailey with the nice offensive board, couldn't connect. And the Warriors will look to push. Hoffman up ahead. Pump fake from Osborne. His shot is up and no good. And a nice rebound from Shepard. He's hunting that ball down. Shepard looking to push. Finds Volkening in front of the Warrior bench. Crosses Verda up top, now back to Shepard. Shepard pulls the corner three. In and out, no good. Tapped around and crowd by Volkening up top. And we've got ourselves a push. Nice little bounce off his foot there. Went straight up into the air for a jump ball. A little bit of a loose ball scrum there. Volkening came up with it, but not before being harmed by Jackson Osborne, his first team third. Inbound to Volkening, now over to Shepard. Shepard looking to get it into the post, had it knocked away. And since the ball was tipped, there'll be no over and back. Here's Bailey, now hands it off to Shepard. Shepard has hesitation dribble. Went to go baseline, took Jackson Osborne, put him on his heels with that hesitation dribble. And then Osborne couldn't recover as he fouls Shepard. 
Osborne's that hunter on the team that, you know, you just, you send him off to get somebody or the ball, or if you want something to get done, you send him out there and he's gonna get it done. That's the kind of mentality you see from him. And newly checked in for the Warriors is number 15, Jackson Clark. And here's a deep three out of the hand of Patrick Signori. Rebound picked up by Shepard, his shot no good. Now tap back out, we'll have another three from Signori, short. And the Warriors are gonna look to push that again. Here's Hoffman, right hand on the right side, jump stop in the lane, up off the glass, long. And a nice rebound by Liam Keller. And we've got ourselves another foul on the Warriors as Volkening was looked to push. Sometimes you're just going a little too fast and you just need, it happens, but you have to maintain control for most of the game or else something like that, where a foul that you don't need to give, that's, that's gonna hurt you in the later quarters. 8-6, Warriors ahead of the Panthers. 21 seconds to play. Now down into the post, here's a fadeaway jumper from Shepard, that one's long. And a nice rebound by Owen Sen. And he gave it right back to the Panthers. And then Shepard kicked it out of bounds. Mm -hmm. As I'm seeing, you know, again, there's a lot of height differential on this floor right now. And the, the shorter guys out there are really aggressive. You really see that, that, that poison that just want to, to be inside, get in there, get rough with the guys, and really just want the ball. Six on the clock. Here's Verda. He'll pull a three. In and out, no good. Nice board by Keller. Long shot by Volkening. Little too strong and over the top of the backboard. So we go to the second quarter with the Warriors up eight to six. Would have been a nice shot if it was football because that looks pretty clean. Just a different type of field goal. No, a little bit. So eight six. Both teams really looking to get the ball inside. Haven't seen, well, I guess from Marengo, we've seen quite a few outside shots. Verda has pulled a couple for the Warriors. But other than that, both teams really trying to get it inside, especially trying to get the ball into Volkening in the post. Yeah, absolutely. Those outside shots, they're not connecting right now, but that doesn't mean he has to stop shooting. He just really needs to follow through nice and easy and hard. And I think if it just smoothly goes in, he'll be a little unstoppable once he starts getting on a hot, hot streak. And even though the, the Warriors really didn't do much in the latter part of the quarter, they find themselves up too. Yeah, and it's all about the aggressiveness down below, I feel, because they're getting a lot of rebounds offensively and defensively, kicking it, and it, this is a fast-paced game. It's gonna see who has the highest mentality, who's got the most in them. So it'll be Panther basketball to start the second quarter. Evan Shepard to inbound to Patrick Signori. Signori will bring it across the timeline with the right hand, switches to the left. Now crosses over nicely and gets it inside to Volkening. Volkening right hand on the right side, easy up and in. That's a nice play right there. Easy, simple, to the point, and you are successful. Osborne to Verda, now to Clark. Clark back to Verda. Verda will drive right hand in the lane, look to kick back out to Clark. He'll pull the three, good. Jack Clark comes off the bench Don't. and knocks down a big three to, to give the Warriors a three-point lead. Don't leave him alone, he'll hurt you. And here's a pass tipped inside to Volkening, but he still pulls from 10. In and out, no good. Warriors looking to extend their lead. Up top to Osborne, back to Hoffman. Hoffman down to Marvel. Marvel with the head fake, right hand on the left side. Up and good, giving the Warriors a five-point lead. They came out guns up blazing in this second quarter. Here's Shepard looking to round the corner. He'll kick it out to Signori. Signori at the head fake, now got it inside to Liam Keller, lost control, and the Warriors looking to push yet again. And probably a layup stopping tip by Preston Bailey, mm -hmm. as he got a hand on the pass from Hoffman as he was looking up the floor. So Hoffman will inbound. Gets it to Osborne. Osborne back to Hoffman. Looking to penetrate, now kick off to Verda. Verda the head fake to Jack Clark. Sam Verda looking, now back up top to Osborne. Kind of playing a 4-1 offense here with Marvel down on the left side block. Here's Hoffman, he'll go baseline. Kills the dribble, turnaround jump shot, fake, out to Osborne. He'll jack up three, that one's short. 
And an offensive board by Hoffman. He'll put up a long jumper. No good. Nice rebound by Preston Bailey. And here comes Volkening. Right hand in the lane. Pull up jump shot. Good. Kind of a one hand jump shot, but it still looked real good. He looks strong. When he has the ball, he knows confidently what he's going to do with it. And at this tournament, that's what you need. You can't second guess yourself. Hoffman's pass up to Osborne was tipped by Shepard. I think Shepard might have jammed the fingers. He's shaking that hand a little bit. And here's Jack Clark. His second attempt from three is long. Rebound pulled down by Volkening. Volkening looking up ahead to Shepard. And Hoffman with the nice defense. Looked wow. like a defensive back in basketball, or basketball in football. <laughs> Coming to tip of the ball away, and apparently it was last touched by Shepard. I guess so. I mean, as he was flying out of, out of bounds, he might have just accidentally touched it. 13-10, Warriors still up by three. Osborne to Verda. Swinging back around to Hoffman. Hoffman, he'll pull up. That one short tipped. Nice rebound by Bailey yet again. And here comes Volkening. Looks like he never gets tired as he just pushes. Here's a Fall away jumper off the glass, no good. And a long outlet pass to Osborne. Up and no good short. And Shepard with the nice contest at the rim. And another nice context by Volkening. Oh. And we're going to have a jump ball. That was a quick jump ball, but I, I, I feel like the ref was just like, okay, we need, we need to slow this down a little bit. Because <laughs> this game is fast. But not, a, not only other officials here to, to call the, the fouls and out of bounds and things like that, but they're supposed to keep control of the game. Mm -hmm. Here's a jumper from Osborne Long. Rebound, rebound pulled down by Shepard. He looks to go one on three. Splits the defense, but Jack Clark with nice D on the fast break was able to knock it away, and it said it was last touched by Clark, so it'll stay down here with the Panthers. Oh, it'll stay down here with the Panthers. Okay. Uh, the, the entire Marengo team was walking back like they <laughs> thought it was out of bounds on Shepard. <laughs> and we've a nice got a little surprise. <laughs> and we've got ourselves a timeout. 310 to play here in the first half. 1310. The Bloomington Warriors over the Marengo Panthers. Jack Clark kind of reminds me of like Speedy Gonzalez. You know, he's just flying everywhere and you don't know where he's going. You never knew where he was coming from, but he is just uh, at the, everywhere, and he's not afraid of anybody. And maybe this is showing my old age, but these kids have so much energy, they just don't stop. I'm tired just looking at them, and it's this, it's three minutes, ten, or three minutes and ten seconds in the second quarter, and I'm exhausted. I, I think I'm just overly impressed with the hustle on both sides. I mean, mm -hmm. you've got Hoffman, who just is back and forth at 110 miles an hour each mm -hmm. way, and then Volkening, who go the length of the floor and then pull up 10 feet in the lane and knock down a jumper. I mean, Volkening has those long legs where he can take a lot of space and a couple steps. So that's going to be hard to defend if you're running absolutely up and down and he's not really wasting a whole lot of energy. That's really good in uh, track that I used to, you know, run and coach. And you love, you feared the people that had the long legs because you knew you'd have to work that much extra to get down there. And so here's Shepard to inbound with his team down three, three ten to play in the half. Looking for Volk, and he cuts now out to Bailey. Bailey back to Shepard. Shepard taps the foot, launches a three, and buries it. Like it was nothing. 13 13. We've got ourselves all knotted up here. Sam Verda now holding in front of the Panther bench. Swung around to the newly checked in. Jackson Baber. Baber back to Osborne. Thought about the three, put it back in the holster. Now to Baber. Baber back to Osborne. This time he'll pull it. That one is good. So the Warriors answer right back with their three-pointer of their own. It looked like he was like, no, I'm not set yet. Pass it back. Okay, now I'm set. Here we go. It was that extra pass. And here's the entry pass to Volkening. He'll turn around, jump shot is good. Like you said, strong. Strong, He's strong Just and smooth. I, you don't see that very often at this age is that these kids are, are defining their skills and every little detail to the point where they just look, it looks like they're on TV right now. So 16-15, Warriors ahead. Osborne took a dribble in the lane, now kicked it out to Verda. Verda thought about a three, now to Osborne. Osborne between the legs, dribble back to Verda. Verda looking into the post. Trying to find Owen Sen. That was a kick out to Marvel. Marvel with the head fake. And he was fouled on his way up. Uh, 
You know, even the simplest things that we learn when we first start still hold true to day in and day out on the on the court. Here's Marvel. His first one is just off. He came in 0 of 1 into the game, which makes him 0 of 2 here in this state tournament. Make that 0 of 3. As Volkanen grabs the board, and he'll look to go coast to coast. Right hand on the right side. It's too easy for him, it just looks like. too easy. Those long legs get him from one side of the lane to the other, I think, and there's no contest. I think he took one step, and he was across the entire lane. Here's a kick to the corner to Baber. Baber puts it on the floor going baseline, had it knocked away by Shepard, and it'll stay on this end. 17-16, Marengo now on top. Minute 26 to play in the first half. Warriors looking the inbound. Osborne finds himself in front of the opponent's bench. Now a nice dump off pass to Sen. Sen's right hand runner is short. And the rebound Ooh. tapped back in by Shepard to Volkening, and Volkening put the ball on his hip. And we're gonna have ourselves a travel. I don't think the kids knew what was happening for about five seconds right there with the ball. They're like, I don't know, is it out? Is it in? Is it going? Did I touch it? Did he touch it? Yeah. It's just, finally well, we got something. Well, that's why they teach you to play with the whistle, right? Oh, absolutely. Verda looking to inbound to Osborne, guarded tightly by Signori. Signori backs off slightly. Is the pass inside to Sen. Send back to Osborne. Nice bounce pass to Marvel. He'll kick it out. Baber for corner three. That one hit the side of the backboard. Rebound tapped around and finally corralled by Marvel. Just under a minute to play in this first half. 17-16, Marengo on top. Baber's three is short. And here comes Volkening yet again. Guarded closely by Verda. Volkening pull up from 17 short. Kind of an off-balance shot, but he squares up nicely, so you always think it has a chance of going in. I'm always wa wanting it to always go in because it looks so good when he releases. Here's Verda. Wonder if the Warriors are hold for one last shot. Baber in front of the Panther bench, now Marvel in that corner. Oh, he had him going down the side of the lane. Baber up to Verda. And it looks like the Warriors will, in fact, hold for one last shot here in the half. Osborne now kicks to Baber. Baber with the head fake, now into Marvel. Marvel in the post, guarded by three Panthers. Over to Sen, Sen's jumper is long, and five on the clock. And Verda's gonna pick up a foul as he reached in and hacked Liam Keller after Keller came down with the defensive board. As I said, this is a very aggressive game, and you know, all the shots that are being taken, and you just wanna get that rebound, you wanna get the offensive rebound. 4.7 seconds, quickly inbounded to Shepard. Shepard right in front of us at the, the scores table, he'll pull up from a deep three mm. online, but just not enough mustard to get it to the rim. So we'll take ourselves to halftime with the Zion Marengo Panthers leading the Trinity Bloomington Warriors 17-16. We'll be back with the second half in just a moment. And we are back. I am Alexa Krul, and Sam Krul is shortly on his way. Now, both teams just came out from the locker room at halftime. And you have to wonder what the game plan is from 
for the next 12 minutes of the rest of the game. It's a tight game. It's a one point deficit. And both teams, I know, are working really hard there. It's a fast paced game. And in a coach's opinion and also player's opinion, a fast game like this is that you don't want your own team to wear themselves out, but you also want to make sure that the game is fast enough that you wear the other team out. So it's kind of how do you create your own tempo and how do you keep that tempo from the rest of the 12 minutes. So we have here that a uh, couple of our players to highlight of this game is that for the Bloomington Trinity Warriors, we have number 35, Josh Hoffman. Um, he's been a little quiet in the first half, but he is being part of that uh, silent beginning of the game. He didn't come out, he didn't score a whole bunch of points, but he did a lot on offense and defense, really pushing the tempo for his own team, grabbing a couple steals here and there, taking a couple shots to pull out the defense. Um, so that's that's what we see coming in for the Trinity Warriors. Now for the Marengo Zion Panthers, we have to highlight uh, number 25, Matthew Vulcaning. He's got the long legs, he's got the athleticism, he's got everything that you want in that star player, but you also need a good backing from players as well. So you have like Liam Keller and you have Preston Bailey. Those guys are also contributing to this as well. And you see that they are down below, they're crashing the boards, they're getting tough, they're getting rough, and that's really what's part of how to keep that game in your, uh, on your team on that tempo. Sam? Well, welcome back, back to the second half. As we are about to begin play, we'll give you a rundown. A little bit of what happened in the first half. I saw some pretty good defense on both ends, as well as uh, very good rebounding on the offensive end as well. Quite a few offensive rebounds, very athletic players here so far, making the game fairly exciting. It is. I was just recapping for all those that are listening and watching on line and also on the radio that this game is a fast paced game and you really need to create your own tempo so your players for your team are still having that athletic ability to keep going for the next 12 minutes. But you also want to wear off the, the, you know, the opponent team. So I think that that's what, as a coach's standpoint, that's what I would say. Inbounding to start the second half are the Panthers. And Shepard will bring it across the timeline with his right hand. Go back to the middle. Uh, runner in the lane had it grabbed, and we're going to have a jump ball. Possession to the Warriors. So Shepard looked to go right at the cup to start things off and was denied. So here's Osborne switching hands as he crosses the timeline. Now in between his legs, looking to go left over to Dirtle. Dirtle now in the post to Marvel. Marvel double teamed. And he traveled. Put a little pressure on him right at the baseline. They had nowhere really to go and ended up taking too many steps. You gotta make sure that you know your, the distance between that baseline and also that sideline because that's where we call the coffin corner. And if you get stuck there, it's really hard to get yourself out. So Shepard directing the offense for his team up one. Vulcaning in the lane, had his pass knocked away. That was intended for Bailey, but Bailey grabs the loose ball and goes right hand on the left side to give his team a three-point lead. Still an assist. Osborne, not a Hoffman. Hoffman will step just inside the three-point line, look for the bump from Volkening, and kicked it back to Osborne. Here's Verda, his one-hand runner in the lane, no good. And the Panthers will push. Volkening leading the charge. Switches hands, pull-up jumper from 15, short. Rebound tapped around, fought for, and grabbed by Osborne. He's got a line to the lane. Right hand up and blocked by Volkening, but I think Shepard got him with the body. As I said, he's that hunter. He's, that, he's got those instincts inside of him that it doesn't matter who I'm coming up against, who's going to be in my way, I'm still going to get my job done. Osborne will go to the line. First one is up and good. As we mentioned before, Osborne has only missed one free throw so far in the tournament, and today he's three of three. Make that four of four. Pretty automatic. 
And that's what you need to be for free throws. You have to have a consistent same routine over and over again. Here's the entry pass to Keller. He had it knocked away. Got it back outside to Signori. Bailey thought about the three, tucked it, now pulls it from just inside the three-point line and knocks it down. We really haven't heard from Bailey a lot in the first half, but now that he came out strong, 15-footer, he's making a statement now. Osborne, he'll take a 15-footer, looking to answer off the glass and good. The bank is open all day, even though it's Sunday. Only if you bank with TCF. Here comes Shepard. He'll cross the line with the right hand. Not one of our sponsors, by the way. No. Shepard in the lane, right hand runner. That one is no good. Rebound pulled down by Volkening. Look to go back up. And I believe we're going to have a foul on Verda. Referee said he leaned into him. And Volkening go to the line for two. So Volkening, we, we've seen pretty much a dual threat. Can shoot from the outside. I should say triple threat. Can shoot from the outside, take the ball in the lane, pull up from 15 or go all the way to the cup. And he's had a lot of success going from the left side to the right side with that big hop step in the lane. First free throws up and no good, a little long. They are 0 for 3 right now in free throws. I mean, they haven't shot a whole lot to get in a routine on the free throw line, but as we know from game after game, free throws are what really matters. Second free throw is no good. So 0 of 4 for the Panthers from the line today. Here's Hoffman looking to push. Pass across the entire court. He's just a stallion. Here's Osborne. He'll shoot a three. That one is long. Rebound pulled down by Keller. Shepard pushing. Right hand on the right side. His runner is long. Nothing but glass pulled down by Hoffman. Right hand, right side. Looking to go baseline and Vulcaning. Nice jab step. Turnaround jumper's long. Rebound pulled down by Bailey, and he threw it away to Hoffman. Hoffman, pump fake, went to turn to go up on Vulcaning, and Vulcaning got him with the body. And that's what you want. You want to attack the key players on that team to weaken their offense so you can go on and be victorious. And that's what a lot of teams, I feel like, shy away from. But once you go into them, draw that foul out, you'll be successful. That's the first foul on Vulcaning. The team's second of the half. Nice ball movement from the Warriors. Verda finds himself in front of his own bench. Now back up top to Hoffman. Hoffman just inside the charity stripe, knocks it down, and the Warriors are ahead. 22-21, and the Warriors have their first lead of the half. Now he's got a strong posture when he shoots. He goes up, he goes strong, and he goes solid. Volkening, now working on Verda outside, crosses over to the left hand, now to Shepard in the corner. Shepard, jab step to the middle, now takes it baseline with the left hand. And he stepped out of bounds on his way to the right side of the hoop. You know, and you got to look at the not so much the offensive key players, but you got to think of the people that are kind of carrying you up with them. You know, um, like Liam Keller, he's always in that bottom position. He's down there. He's getting rough. He's getting tough. And that's what you need. You need that, that silent score, but you also need someone that's going to be nice and strong. Here's a turnover to the Panthers, and Volkening will take it all the way to the basket with the right hand. And if you let him get within five feet, it's pretty automatic. Just you have to stop him. There, you got to stop him with a foul, or you got to step in front of him and try to take a charge, take an offensive foul, because he's going to go no matter what. So 23-22, that last basket by Volkening puts the Panthers up one. And the way it's looking, we might have another back and forth game like we did this morning. I think so too. And it doesn't seem like one team is gonna pull away five, six points because the, the other team, no matter which side you're on, they're always gonna come back. 2.38 to play here in the third quarter. 23-22 again. Panthers leading the Warriors. Again, the Warriors in the white uniforms, blue numbers, black trim. And the Panthers in the blue uniforms with the white lettering and white trim. Is a drive in the middle from Verda. Pump fake now kicked out to Hoffman. Hoffman will take it in the middle. His head fake now to Verda. Verda's five-footer is good. Nice. 
you want to make sure that you, you don't leave any guy out, but you know, as you team, you need to look around and he's done just that. Hoffman looked around, saw that uh, Verda was open. And Shepard caught the ball in the corner, but I think tapped his foot one too many times with the travel. So a turnover to the Warriors, who find themselves in the lead by one. After the Verda jump shot in the lane on their last possession. There's Hoffman. On the near side corner, guarded closely by Shepard. Shepard with the good D. Osborne swung around to Verda. Now to Jack Clark, who checked in for Diedrich Dirtle just a minute ago. Here's the aforementioned Clark in the corner, kicked out to Verda. Verda's jumper is short. Rebound Panthers. And here comes Volkening, getting in the lane. He'll pull up from 10, good. As you said, within five feet, automatic. It's hard, it's hard to defend that. That one was a little outside of five, but it's just as smooth, and Shepard with the pocket pick. Here he comes, right hand on the left side up and good. Tough layup from the defender flying in from the opposite way. But he was smooth about it. He didn't flinch in nothing, just went up nice and easy. There's the Jack Clark in the corner, up to Verda, not to Osborne. Osborne back to Verda, finds Clark. Hoffman will pull a three. That one is in and out, no good. And Osborne got himself in there, almost got an offensive board. But the Panthers pull it away nonetheless, and Osborne got in the way of Volkening and reached. You know, these Zion Panthers are just, they're so long, they have a long, you know, wingspan, they've got long legs, and then they have a couple guys that are real stocky, and so you have a nice, well-rounded team. So Volkening across the timeline with the right hand. Signori holding the ball with 45 seconds to play here in the opening quarter of the second half. And Verda grabbed Volkening as he tried to catch that pass. Fans who are right, not real appreciative of that call. No. It's a hard one to judge, too, from either side. So. Shepard will walk up to the three-point line and take it. No good rebound, Bailey. He goes up with the offensive board and good. You guys have at least one man down there at all times, all times, just uh, for that specific reason. Five-point Panther lead. Hoffman, I think, saw Verda. Out of his peripheral vision, tried to throw him a pass and threw it to nobody, except the referee at the scores table. He just wanted him to be involved. That's it. He just wanted him to be included. Here's Volkening who crossed the line, timeline with his left hand. Now inside to Shepard in the post on Clark. Tried to get it outside to Liam Keller. Kicked it away, but it regained. And here's Bailey. One dribble kills it. Now over to Signori. He'll hand it off to Shepard. Six on the clock. Five, four. Shepard in the corner. Right hand jump shot. No good, and the Warriors will pull down the board as that concludes the third quarter. So I know we mentioned last time that the third quarter is kind of the money quarter, and the Panthers really took advantage. They really did, and you know, it's, it's right out of the gate. Sometimes in the locker room you do cool off a little bit, and it is their time to kind of rest your legs, regroup yourself, try to bring up a different strategy, but you know, the Zion Panthers just really came out with a bang and they went for it the whole entire time. Now that the Warriors have to come back with a five point deficit, it can be a little struggling at times, especially when it's the last quarter. You want to come out guns a blazing in the first minute. So not too much foul trouble to speak of. If you're looking at the scoreboard currently, the next time the camera hands that way. Sam Verda has three. Other than that, nobody is really in a whole lot of foul troubles. We haven't had too many fouls in the second half at all. Just three for the Warriors and only two for the Panthers. So a pretty clean game foul-wise. That's uh, kept us moving along. This is a very fast game. Like I, it's, it's hard to kind of pinpoint a lot of different things that are going on because so much is going on. You have a lot of key players on the floor coming off the bench like uh, Jack Clark. He has been an asset to this Trinity Warriors team. Here's Signori 
working on Osborne. He'll find Bailey. Bailey thought about the three, stepped in, then stepped back out, and missed long. Verda up ahead to Hoffman. Hoffman now kicked out to Clark. Clark with the left hand, moving back up top, found Verda. Verda in the lane, now up to Hoffman. Hoffman's jumper is good. And that's just great ball movement. That's, you have to give it up, just that was great ball movement from the start. If nothing else, these Warriors really do know how to pass pretty well. They do. Now Shepard working on Osborne, gets it inside the Vulcaning, working on Verda. His turnaround jumper, no good. Rebound Hoffman. Warriors looking to cut the lead to one or to tie. Osborne with the fake pass inside. Hoffman will pull just inside the free throw line. No good. Rebound Volkening. And when he's got it, you know he's looking to push. Splits two defenders in the lane. And they're going to call a travel on that one as he kind of lost control on his way to the basket. And he dragged that back foot, which I feel like sometimes it can, it can go either way. So Osborne will bring it up for the Warriors after the Panther turnover. Verda, top of the key, looking inside. Now to Clark, Clark to Osborne. Hoffman spins, now back out to Verda. About 18-footer, off glass, no good. Hoffman pulls down the offensive board. Verda, head fake, kick out to Hoffman. The two-man game seems to be working pretty well. And here's Jack Clark with the rebound. And they're going to say Liam Keller hit Jack Clark in the face, but it looked like Clark might have been holding the ball and he hit the ball and it kind of hit Clark in the face. Yeah, a little bit, but it's, again, that's, it's, a, it's an interesting situation. Both, both sides are kind of loud on the call, but you got to keep on playing no matter what. Hoffman goes baseline on Volkening, had the ball blocked by Keller. Uh, but they're going to say Keller got him with the body possibly, and that's two fouls in a row on Liam Keller. This one will send Hoffman to the line. Hoffman's first free throw is up and short. Looked like he might have leaned back on that free throw slightly. Probably the reason he missed short. Second one is up and no good. So those free throws, they had a chance to cut it to one. Instead, it's Panther ball, and Volkening is looking to drive to extend their lead. Right hand on the right side, up and good. He just splits the defenders and gets to the lane, and nobody's going to get up there with him. No, he, he, and it kind of reminds me of just like a Maserati just floating through traffic, and it's just so smooth and so clean. It's just so nice to watch. Five-point Panther lead, and Verda saved what might have been a turnover on the pass from Osborne. Verda will split the lane in the middle, right hand up off the glass and good. Nice, that is a nice shot right there. Strong, to the point, you gotta love it. Nice strong move from Verda. And with four minutes to play, the Panthers hold a slim three point lead. Just to give you a little more background on these teams, uh, the Warriors last appearance in the Illinois State basketball championships was last year and they lost in the consolation semifinals and for the Panthers of Zion Marengo last appearance was 2015 so just a few years ago and they lost in the consolation semifinals as well so both of these teams are no stranger to the state tournament they've been here as recently as last year and they both were kind of showing that you know it's good basketball teams absolutely I mean, one came last year, one came a couple of years ago, but as you said, they're no strangers. They, they know where they wanted to go. And to get to this point where you're playing for third and four from Constellation Champion Finals, you know, you got to praise yourself for at least a little bit. So seeing as how this is the third and fourth place game, don't forget, you've got the women's championship game coming up directly after this one. And then following that, you'll have the men's championship game featuring the Comets of Christ Peoria and Cross Yorkville. Two teams that pretty deservingly are in the championship this weekend. Here's Volkening. Left hand on the left side, now skip past the Shepherd. His three balls down the well. Wow, that was pretty. Caught in pretty. rhythm, nice foot tap, knocked it down. Here's Clark with the pump fake. 
Swung around to Hoffman. Hoffman now back to Osborne. Osborne to Clark. Clark thought about the three. Bailey closed out nicely. Here's the pass inside to Marvel. Marvel was looking at Verda. Had a man step in front. And here's Osborne in the lane up off the glass. No good. Rebound Volkening had it knocked away by Marvel. Pass to Verda. And a block by Volkening. It looked like he got above Verda, but it looks like they might have bumped in the air, and that's where the foul came from. And it was because he was behind him. If he was in front, it would have been a clean block, no questions asked, but because he went from the side and behind, the ref had to call. That's Volkening second, team fifth. First free throw from Verda is no good. And they are now five, four of nine, my apologies for the game. Second free throw is off right, no good. Rebound tapped out of the hand of Volkening by Hoffman. And it'll be Panther basketball. You know, the count of the free throws, it doesn't seem like there's, as you said, there's a whole lot of fouling going on, a lot of going to the line. So this is all pure basketball. And we've got an illegal screen on Keller. So Keller tried to free up Volkening just past the timeline and moved a little bit. I jinxed it a little bit, I think. I think so. Now we're at nine fouls total for the second half. And you kind of expect that in the third and fourth quarters as you're maybe getting a little more tired, start leaning on people, uh, start playing a little more aggressive when the game is tight. Uh, these things are bound to happen. And it's it, this is it. It's either. Verda looking to tie. That one's short. Excuse me, not tie. Cut the lead in half. And here comes Volkening looking to extend this six-point Panther lead. In the lane, right hand, drew some contact up and good. And he got a nice screen from Keller, and it was a solid screen. He made sure that would stick. Panthers up eight. Clark swings it outside to Hoffman. Hoffman looking to get in the lane. Back out to Clark. High pass. Might have had a chance at a three. Had the pass been clean. Now over to the corner to Hoffman. He'll step inside the three-point line. Nothing. Now back out to Clark. Clark with the one dribble kill. Now over to Hoffman. Back up to Clark, he'll put the ball on the ground once again. Kills it after a dribble. Hoffman back to Clark, now over to Ho Hoffman in the corner. Out to Osborne, nice passing from the Warriors, leads to the three-pointer. And that's just called patience right there, absolute patience. So Osborne buries the three from just left of the top of the key. Volkening met by two defenders at the top of the key, Osborne and Verda. Swung over to Shepard, Clark guarding Shepard closely. Driving him back toward the half court line. Now sort of trapped, and we've got a five second call. Shepard dribbled for a little too long and gives some, give some props to, to uh, Jack Clark, who stayed with Shepard the whole way. I mean, it doesn't matter who you are, where you came from, if you know how to get your man to stay put for five seconds, that's great defense right there. And we've got a timeout called by the Warriors as they find themselves down five, just under two minutes to play here in the game. So, talked about the fouls. Liam Keller is now the player of note in the most foul trouble as he has four. Kind of picked up three or four quick ones, or four, three quick ones, just after the third quarter ended, I believe. I think they've been all in the fourth, haven't they? Yeah, and nobody else, everyone had about one, maybe two fouls. He had three going into the second half, and then he just picked up his fourth. And, I mean, that's what you're going to expect from your power forward. He's going to be aggressive. He's going to be tough. But sometimes one or two of those fouls could have been not done, I guess you could say in layman's terms. But, I mean, it just... So with just under two minutes to play, the speaking of fouls, the Panthers have six, and the Warriors only have three. So the Panthers will be shooting at least a one and one the rest of the way. But again, we talked about in the first game, I think we talk about it every time we do a game and it comes down to the fourth quarter and we've got you know, a foul situation like this. That could absolutely work in the advantage to the advantage of the Warriors being able to foul and stop the clock. Absolutely, and then it gets on in the sides or down below a basket, and then you can really put pressure on the ball handlers to move a little bit faster to make that mistake for you instead of having to foul again. Osborne pulls a three, front iron, back iron, no good, and last touched by Volkening. 
And it'll stay on this end with the Warriors. That was a hard fall. Didn't look real pretty. He grimaced a little bit. I hope he's OK. <laughs> he's a tough kid. Here's the entry pass to Hoffman. His jab step throws it away. It's usually not a jab step. He, he jump stop just outside the lane and looked back to kick it out to Osborne and just threw it to the bench instead. I think he was looking to pump fake it and maybe draw his offense or his defense to go up, but you know, his defender stayed nice and solid, so he had to kick it out. Shepard working on Clark. Clark is a heck of a defender. Staying with Shepard the whole way. Inverna picked it away with his left hand. There was a little bit of contact. So I, I that, not too much, but enough for I guess a foul, but I yeah. guess technically he reached with the wrong hand, too. He went across the defender's body, and that's going to get your call more times than not. And that's a learning experience right there. Shepard now holding. 122 to play in the contest. Panthers find themselves up five. Vokening double teamed. Ball knocked away by Clark. So they, they three defenders on Vokening and just dribbling in the corner. And you know what, you have to give it to Clark and Osborne for really just switching on both and then attacking the one person who's gonna hold the ball the most. They are really giving this offense a hard time up top. Shepard inbounded to Bailey and Bailey got it right back from, or excuse me, Shepard got it right back from Bailey. And that was Signori looking for Shepard along the sideline, had it knocked away by Hoffman. And we're gonna have another timeout called by Bloomington. 64 ticks left. Panthers up five. Foul situation again, six to four. Six for the Panthers, sorry, six for Marengo, four for Bloomington. Now, what would you do in this situation? Being a player and a coach, what would you do in this situation? If I'm Bloomington, I, th I think I have to double down on Vulcaning and Shepard and make somebody else beat me right now. Um, I mean, they're, the other guys have played well. But really in crunch time, I believe that Marengo will try to go to those two. Uh, if I'm Marengo, I'm setting screens to get the ball in. Um, I'm not going to hold it just yet. I think if you're looking to stall and pull the ball, there's too much that can go wrong. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I you know, steal a bad pass. Uh, somebody steps out of bounds, it's a turnover. There's still a minute left, there's plenty of time to come back down five. So I'm looking, it's foul and layup time. So here's an alley-oop essentially to Volkening. He grabs it and stepped out of bounds. So they were looking to attack. The pass was just slightly high. Nice play, as Volkening is easily the highest jumper out here. here's there's no question about that. Verdon now to Osborne, he'll pull a three. That one is short. Offensive board, Hoffman in the lane. Jack Clark will take a three, good! Jack Clark cuts it to two! Give it to Mighty Mouse, he is clutch right now. Volkening triple teamed at the top of the key, beats all three, crosses back over on Osborne, and we're gonna have a timeout, Marengo. 38.8 seconds to play, and Jack Clark nails a clutch three from just in front of his own bench to cut the game to two. You gotta love it. 38 seconds left to go. You're cut it to two. You've got, your, your boys don't quit. Your boys do not quit, Bloomington. They don't at all. But then again, this is the state championships. You're playing for third and fourth place. Some of these kids are gonna be gone next year playing in high school and you, you know, this is, this is it a lot of times. Unless you, unless you go play at nationals, this is really it. And you wanna leave that that legacy at your school. Like, we did this well at the state tournament. I want you, the next teams behind them, try to reach us, come and get us. And that's what's gonna keep your programs continuously coming to state, continuously getting better. Absolutely, and this is definitely something these kids will remember forever. Oh, I do. I, same here. I never got to play in the state tournament, but it's fine. It's okay. It was a good time. It was, I'm, I'm not, I, I'll I'm, let you know I'm not, I'm from not, my experience. It was a great time. I'm not bitter or anything. It's no, fine. not at all. It's fine. So the Panthers will inbound. Near sideline. 39, uh, 38 38.8 seconds to play. Up two. Shepard inbounds the Volk and he nearly had it knocked away. Hoffman reached in. 
And it's going to send Volkening to the line for a one and one. Now, remember, Marengo has not made a free throw yet today. Oh, no. They, there's only five still, so they have one more to give. I'm just saying getting to that point. Oh, get, yes. As you mentioned, the Warriors still one more foul to give. Shepard inbounds to Bailey. Bailey back up top to Volkening. Now he'll hand off to Shepard. Shepard double teamed, and Jack Clark grabbed his arm. And that's foul number six. We got Osborne walking off a little bit of a tweak right there from the jump, but you know what? These kids, they want to be on this floor. They will not, they will not stop. And here's the inbound from Shepard, and we're gonna have a foul on Hoffman before the inbound. And that's gonna send Volkening to the line. So really you're sending him to the line without missing, without, without any time running off the clock. You're sending Volkening to the line with no time coming off the clock by fouling him before the inbound. Here's the first of the one and one, that one's good. This so, so we mentioned before, Marengo had not made a free throw to that point, they were 0 for 4 and now 1 of 5. And you know, they're about a 50-50% free throw shooting, so either way, you're, you're, you're getting a gamble out of it, but you're still stopping the clock, and that's what this Warrior teams need. They need to stop the clock, shoot real fast, and get this going. Here's Verd in the lane, back out to Clark. Clark couldn't get a handle on it. Here's Osborne, 20 on the clock. Runner in the lane is in and out, no good. Kick out to Hoffman, he'll pull the three, short. And the Panthers will let it go out of bounds. And it'll be their ball up four with 11.7 seconds to play. Warriors will put some pressure on in the backcourt trying to get a quick steal and that was a nice knock away by Owen Sen on the defensive end. Bailey inbounding. Wokening made himself available. However, the ball went into Shepard. And, and Shepard will go to the line for the one and one with 10.3 to play. That's the eighth foul for the Warriors if you're keeping track at home. And we haven't seen Shepard up on the line yet, so we really don't know what's gonna happen. But he does seem pretty solid in his free throw shooting as far as these are actually his first free throws of the tournament. And he sinks the first one to give his team the five point lead. Second one is up and good. Six point Panther lead, 10.3 to go. Any chance the Warriors could possibly tie this thing up? I mean, there's always a possibility, always a possibility, but they are going to have to do like one or two passes, shoot, sink it, get it out of bounds, steal it, and go back up for the shot again if they want to tie it up because they need two threes right now to get to 40. It's not impossible, but it's going to, it's really going to test time. And it looks as if the Panthers are going to empty their bench. All but conceding this one. Oh, not conceding this one, but getting their players in to... We got a little, uh, little... Little disagreement on the... Between the coaches, not sure what they're having an issue with. I believe the... The Panthers were going to empty their bench up six with 10.3 to go. And the Warriors were not willing to, maybe? I don't want to speculate, but that's that's what I'm, I'm I'm guessing was happening right there. Something with timeouts and just confusion, but. Inbound to Osborne. He'll get across the timeline. Pull a three, had it blocked. Now back out to Hoffman. He's got to pull one with four seconds to go. Short. And that'll do it. Bailey with the rebound in the corner. And your Zion Marengo Panthers are the third place finishers here at the Lutheran Sports Association of Illinois State Championships. And congratulations to both teams. They really did a great job, a phenomenal job. They never gave up. I mean, it was a close game until about the end right there with that six point deficit from the Panthers. But the Warriors, as you can tell, they are a solid team and they will go far. Really, I, I believe it came down to DeVolkening being able to get in the lane and finish at the rim that really kind of did it in for 
the Warriors. You got to give it up to the kid. I mean, he's athletic. He's got he's got hops. He's got long strides. He can shoot off the jump. I mean, really a great talented kid. And we're going to go to the scores table for the presentation of the third and fourth place trophies. At this time, we want to congratulate both teams for representing your schools and quality programs in a quality game. Fellas, thank you very much. At this time, we're going to have uh, the captains for our Warriors from Bloomington come forward and step your fourth place trophy in 2018. And to our winners in our third place game, the, War the uh, Panthers of Maringo Zion. Congratulations, fellas. And we'll ask you to go next door for your team pictures and we'll get ready for our next game coming up shortly. So congratulations to both schools. First of all, the, for a fourth place finish for Kurt Bussey and his Warriors and a third place finish for Dave Washer and his Panthers. Coming up next, the girls championship game. Should be a good one. I'm excited. I always love the championship game for the girls. It's gonna be a great game. That one's coming up here in just about 20 minutes. The other guys will have that one for you and we'll see you later. Thank <laughs> you.